from the Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's Dale and Scott. Hey, Dale. Hmm. If someone rips you a new one, how do you know which one to use? Uh, based on its smell. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I was lying in bed the other night. Is that or, not funny? Yeah. No, that is funny. I was lying in bed and I thought of that. I'm going to rip you a new one. <laughs> what? Am I supposed to use the new one or the old one? <laughs> and what is it? An asshole. I think that's what it means to rip that's, a new one. That's why right? I say it's based on the smell. Exactly. So, you know that, I know that you hate that I do this, but uh, you know that I watch the Kardashians, right? Mm -hmm. So, I've been watching the new Kardashian show on Hulu, and I've been enjoying it. I think it's better than the old Keeping Up with the Kardashians. It's kind of fun. I'm I'm really enjoying Courtney and Travis Barker, their kind of love connection. Yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. Anyway, so at one point... Uh, Chloe and uh, Kim were taking a, hi- a hike together, and Court and Chloe asked Kim about Yay. And I'm like, well, "Who the fuck is Yay? What is Yay?" Well, it turns out that's how you pronounce Kanye West's new name. Oh, I thought it was Yee. I was always saying Yee, but it's Yay. It's the end of his name, Kanye. Well, that makes sense. Yay, it does make sense. And I was just like slapping myself i'm like oh well duh 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 these are the things that uh get me excited yep. <laughs> these are the things i write down to talk about on the show <laughs> lucky for you who are out there listening there's a you guys we've talked about airbnb and verbo on the show before and the um idea that you can take your house or townhouse or a room in your house and rent it out to someone in need mm-hmm. right well now there's a thing called swimly there's no P in it. Um, Swimly is... Swimply. It's, I don't think it's Swimply. I, I, I put the P in there by accident. I think it's <laughs> Swimly. <laughs> I told you about this. There's no P in the pool, Dale. Anyway, it's the swimming... This is for swimming pool owners to rent out their backyard spaces for a chunk of time to strangers who want to swim in their pool. This is... I don't know. This sounds very sketch to me it 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 doesn't sound sketchy it just seems like the liability is way too high the liability seems insane insane like is is swimly offering insurance for if someone drowns the pandemic came with a silver lining for swimly uh which had just gotten off the ground when covid started but now they're gunning for a one billion dollar dollar valuation it's a cool idea is it though yeah especially if you have a kick-ass pool it doesn't require host maybe it is swimply maybe it is swimply because it's written here like a million times with the p in it it's swim and it's simple swimply there you go i guess you're right i don't know it does not require host to provide bathrooms but says that most of them do i mean i I guess if you're at the pool you don't want people peeing in your pool (laughs) The company does offer liability and property damage protection, but recommend hosts obtain appropriate insurance. Well, damn right. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to let strangers into your backyard, you better know what you're getting. You better cover all your bases. Exactly. The CEO of the company says that they they think that they could expand on this and, and rent tennis courts, music studios, woodworking shops, gourmet kitchens. I mean, it's a kind of endless. Right? You could rent anything. He said, every passion needs a space. That's actually a pretty good quote. I like that. I need a masturbation space. <laughs> Is someone going to rent that to me? <laughs> so I was... exist already. But this brought up an idea. What, what do we have that we can rent to people? Well, you can already rent your garage. Yeah. You can rent your car. All right. But we've got... Um, We've got five horse stables. You won't let me rent those. No, I don't want fucking horses here. But we got something. You know something. what that comes with. How about the dogs? Could we rent the dogs to someone? <laughs> that is what I want to do. There you go. This, my friends, is the Swish Edition. From their secret underground studio, this is the Swish Edition. We got a mouthful for you guys. Dale and Scott are in the studio on the mics, and, and, and they fired up the antenna. Yeah. 
it has to come whether you like it or not. And if you're willing to show it, they'll take a picture of it. I actually think it might throw. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else in between, here are your new best friends. They're your hosts. It's very exciting for me because this is the best show ever made. Dale and Scott. The um, breaking news this week. We always like to start the show with breaking news. The, the music, if the music will ever end, I can tell you the breaking news. McDonald's is the last major corporation to officially pull out of Russia. This is huge. It's big. It's really big. And they took their time doing it because they have, I didn't know this, 850 restaurants in Russia. A lot of restaurants. 62,000 employees. Now, they, they closed down their restaurants in March, but they kept paying the employees. Which I thought was pretty cool. And it's, I didn't know it's that. Not the, I didn't know that. It's not the people of Russia that we have a problem with. No. They're all great people. It's that one guy. He's, right. He's a little off his rocker. But we have to show him that we mean business. And it's I'm glad that McDonald's has gotten behind it. McDonald's is retaining their copyrights in Russia just in case we want to come back. Right. But here's the, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing is that, okay, say you sell 850 restaurants and and say you sell those restaurants to, you know, a, a, a few hundred people. Yeah. It's like, you know, what's the uh, McDonald's has no fallback here. They're fucking screwed. I mean, because they'd, if have, I, to start if o- I, they'd if, have to start over. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. However, if I bought one of these restaurants in McDonald's, McDonald's certainly isn't going to come and take the signage down. They're taking the signs down, they're taking their names off the buildings, and they're not allowing them to use the menus, so they're not going to have the food. So they want to try to sell these buildings, but they're just going to be a bare bones McDonald's with no, nothing McDonald's about it. I don't know. I don't think they have any recourse at that. If they sell it, they can come take all they want, but if I decide to put McDonald's back on my building... What are they going to do about what it? What recourse do they have? What are they I don't think do they have I don't think they All have right, any. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, I don't think they can do anything about it. Because you know when I went on my trip to Africa, I went to Ghana for a month. Yeah. I saw a Starbucks. Sure. And I saw um what's unauthorized? What? Oh, well, of course. The logo looked nothing like Starbucks. They sold coffee, but it yeah. was nothing like a Starbucks. Oh, well, they were just uh, they were and just there copying. Was a, and there was a home goods store. It's popular here, and I can't think of the name of it. But it's like you, you have no recourse when it comes to that thing. Not I mean, in a country if, the like- government, if the government's not going to support you or, yeah. and support your entity, it's like, what the fuck does it care? We can't Just even leave get, everything there. We can't even get it. Uh, Just stop selling them your product to be able to sell. Well, exactly. That's, that's what they're going to do. That's the main and, thing. Yeah. I mean, can they recreate the Big Mac? I don't know. Um, but it, they could try. They could certainly try. I mean, the thing is, they've been closed since March, so anything that they currently have is probably spoiled. I, I I just say you just pack up and you just fucking leave. I think that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, we can't even get Brittany back. Brittany, the WNBA player. I mean, we have no... Uh, I, there's nothing happening between these two no, countries. Yeah, no, nothing. Well, nothing. So nothing. So I think you just, you just, you just leave. You just don't, leave. Don't feel bad for McDonald's. They have thirty nine thousand restaurants in over a hundred countries around the world, and uh, they made five point seven billion dollars last year. Yeah, so. here's the thing. I know that you say that, and that's a pretty big number. But still, if you have eight hundred fifty restaurants, that's, that's got to be a, a. It's a big chunk. It's a big chunk. It's of, a big chunk of the value of the five point seven billion dollars that they're making. Agreed. But it, American fast food restaurants make a lot of money abroad. Hey, I believe it. I believe it. I mean, I think Kentucky, we've talked about this on the show before. Kentucky Fried Chicken is the number one most popular restaurant in outside, the world. Outside the U.S. I went to one on purpose when I went to Ghana. Yeah. They only sold dark meat. You mentioned that before. Yeah. No, no breast meat at all. And I think we've talked about the fact, what did they do with all the white meat? <laughs> I don't it went know. somewhere. I don't know where it went. <laughs> it went to the Chinese restaurants, I guess. I don't know. It went somewhere. <sighs> I love this story because I got a lot of pushback uh, when I posted about the Shot Sage Blue Maryland. This is a work of art from Andy Warhol from 1964. It's a 40-inch square acrylic and screen print that he created. He, he did five of these. 
Each one of them had a different colored background. This is the one we're talking about is the sage blue one. And it just sold at auction for the record price of $195 million, which is a new record. The highest sold piece of art ever yeah. at auction, which I think is pretty friggin' amazing. I mean, there's the picture. You can see it in front of you. Yeah, I'll post it up on our... You, you guys have seen it. It's an iconic picture. Um, the reason they call it shot Sage Blue Maryland is because back in the 60s, a performance artist was visiting Warhol in his factory in Manhattan, and she asked Warhol if she could shoot the paintings. And he like anyone would assume that she meant he wanted, she wanted to take pictures of them. And he said, yes. <laughs> and she pulled out a gun and fired and shot a hole right through four of the paintings. Well, damn. Yeah. So it's kind of a fun story. Well, yeah. Yeah. Warhol never met Marilyn Monroe who died in 1962 under suspicious circumstances. I'd like to point out there's about 18,000 documentaries about that. There's a new one out, I think about how she may or may not have died. Anyway, she wasn't uh, we, shot. Yeah. I think we the think the, we JFK think the Ken- killed her. We think the Kennedy <laughs> drugged her. Yeah. <laughs> While he was having sex with her. Here's the best part. The best part is that the painting, the sage blue painting. Um all this money, this $195 million, it's all going to charity. Oh, that's horrible. The most recent owner is donating the proceeds to healthcare and education for underpriv- underprivileged children on an international level. I guess that's okay. I think that's great. Yeah. What's really sad, though, is that uh, Christie's auction house is taking about 20% of that. They get, saw, a, they get a ridiculous chunk. A ridiculous chunk just for selling the motherfucker. They're there for. They provide a business. I did not write down the guy's name who bought it. I didn't recognize his name, and I didn't look him up. But he obviously has a lot of money if he's spending two hundred million dollars on a Maryland picture. That's going to hang. I assume I would put it above the fireplace in the living room, in the bathroom. Where else are you going to put it? In the bathroom. <laughs> it's funny. I think some celebrities keep their like Oscars and Emmys in the bathroom. Mm. Kind of fun. And that's where you spend a lot of time. It's where guess. you want to look at it. Yeah. When is big too big? That's what she said. Mm. Royal Caribbean has announced that they're building a new class of ship. It's called the Icon Class, and it will be the biggest yet. Speaking of ships, did you see the one that has a crane on the top? Yeah. And it has a bubble, and you get in it, and it takes you way up. Yeah, it's Quantum of the Seas. Yeah. Yeah. It's been out for a while. But yeah, you want to check it out? Not really. Anyway, Icon of the Seas is currently being built in Finland for the Royal Caribbean Company, and it's due in fall of 2023. It'll be followed by by two more ships in 24 and 25, and the CEO of Royal Caribbean has announced that they will be bigger than what they're currently sailing. Currently, the biggest ship in the world is Wonder of the Seas, which is uh, part of the Oasis class, which Dale and I have sailed on. I've sailed on an Oasis, and Dale and I both sailed on Allure of the Seas. It's a fucking massive Which ship. at the time that we were both on those ships, they were the biggest the ships biggest in ships. the world. Now, Wonder of the Seas is the biggest ship. And here's how big it is. It's 1,188 feet long, 210 feet wide, and 136, almost 137,000 tons. But this is the number that will really get you. The fucking wonder holds 6,988 guests and 2,300 crew members. In addition to the 2,300 crew. That's almost 10,000 people on one fucking boat. Yeah. And the icon is going to be bigger than that. I don't want to go on it. Where can these ships go? Where can they go? And when they get there... And they were unloading seven, eight, nine thousand guests all at once into a port. What the fuck happens to the port? <laughs> right? It, ma- it makes it no fun. It, it makes, makes it, no, it fun. no fun. Like what? It, what is? What is one of your? What is one of your currently out of all the cruises that you've been on? What is one of your favorite smallest ports? Um, I liked Ibiza, which is off the coast of Spain. Um. I mean, I love like Portland, Maine. I love uh, Bangor, Maine. I like 
the quiet little yeah. places in so, the world. So what do you yeah. do? And like we went to that place in Oregon not that long ago. Oh, Astoria. Astoria. Yeah. I can't imagine getting off on that port knowing what the restaurants that were available. There were like two. Two. And you have, okay, 7,000 guests. They wouldn't go there. They you wouldn't go, go there. They would have to right. only go to big fat places. Right. I just, you know, I've been on two of these ships. Uh, we did the Oasis to check it out. You and I did the Allure for a, um Atlantis event. It was fine, but it was like being on a fucking... It was like being in a skyscraper on the water. I can't even imagine this many people getting off at Key West. <clears throat> no, they couldn't get it. The, one of these ships couldn't get a Key West. It's just too many fucking can't, people. I can't handle it. can't handle it. I'm not... You know, I know my friend Melissa loves these ships, and she'll go on it, and she'll check it out. She'll probably go on the Icon. She'll probably book it for the inaugural t- cruise. But I, I just... I have no interest. I want to go small. I want to go on the 60,000 ton. I, yeah. I want riverboat. I want yeah. Let's go on the ship that only has like eight cabins. Yeah. <laughs> we want real service. <laughs> That's how you get real service. I don't need no bumper cars and I don't need no log flumes on the fucking boat or observation bubbles like you were talking about on the yeah. quantum. I don't need all that shit. I want good food, drinks, drinks, maybe a guitar player or a, a piano casino. player. Yeah, well, those super small ships don't have casinos, but so we need to go medium, I guess. Anyway, speaking of casinos, U.S. casinos had the best month ever, and we're talking about ever, in March of 2022, winning $5.3 billion. That's one month. Wow. This is not including all the tribal Indian-owned casinos in the country. They're going to report later this month. And I want to say there are more of those in the United States than there are corporations. There may be. There's a lot of them. Last year was a banner year, by the way. $53 billion is what the casinos took in across the country. And it's probably no surprise the number one market in the United States in 2021 was the Las Vegas Strip. Made $7 billion last year. Downtown Las Vegas. I didn't know this. It's counted as a separate entity. Yeah, I didn't know. It made seven hundred and thirty one million last year. Wow. So it's so add that to the seven billion. So it's one point wow. seven billion. <laughs> and those are some shitty casinos down there. <laughs> there are, well, circa's good. Um well, there's, there's a handful there's of good a, ones, but there's a lot of shitty things going on down there. That's why they only made seven hundred and thirty one <laughs> million, Dale. Right. Versus the seven billion up here on the strip. Um we're not on the strip, but closer to our house than downtown. Yeah. Number two was Atlantic City, which surprised the fuck out of me. Surprised the hell I didn't out think of me. anybody was going there anymore. Number three was the Chicago land area. And number four surprised me even more Baltimore, DC area. DC doesn't have any casinos. So they're talking well, about Maryland Live. They're talking about MGM Grand, which is just outside of DC in Maryland. MGM National Harbor. National Harbor. Yeah. Um, number four, they only have like two casinos. Oh, and Horseshoe in Baltimore. Yeah, there's there's a few. Yeah. Yeah. It's like three. There's like, yeah, two or three. It's pretty amazing that it came in at number four. I mean, you got the, the whole live, country. which is outside of Baltimore, and but then you got the one that's right in Baltimore City. Horseshoe. Horseshoe, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, night before last, Dale and I went to a new restaurant called Super Frico. It's at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, which is downtown on the Strip. Sandwiched between Bellagio and Aria. Yeah. I guess. Anyway, really cool. I would call this, they call it Psychedelic Italian. It's an Italian restaurant, but it's like really weird. I didn't want to go. I really wasn't up for it, but I'm glad I went. I mean, the food was, actually, the food was decent. It was decent food. It wasn't nothing spectacular or great for the prices that you paid. Right. It was all about what was happening around you in the restaurant, the atmosphere, the yeah. things that you got to see, the actors. I mean, I, I we were once eating calamari, and there was a ballerina just spinning around yeah. the restaurant just for no reason. And then at one point, one guy came out with a mop and said, uh, did someone ejaculate under your table? <laughs> And he wanted to it's clean, just, clean it's under just the weird t- things that happen. Really throughout your weird meal. fucking stuff happens. Yeah. yeah, it's not surprising that this happens because this is this restaurant is brought to you by the same people that uh, 
do Absinthe and Opium, which are two of the great Spiegel shows World? Yeah. Is that the name of it? Spiegel World. Spiegel World. Yeah. yeah. There's also a DJ who plays only vinyl. Man, the music was great. The music was great. I, and I couldn't tell you a single song. It's just one of those things, but it was just really, really good. I did. Um, it's just funky, and it met the atmosphere. I did Shazam at one point because there was a song that I really liked. So yeah. I Shazammed it and put it on my Apple Music, so yeah. we can play it later. It's just funky songs that you probably have never heard of before. Yeah. So we had a good time. It was fun. You know, we don't usually go to the strip at night. It's very rare for us. Maybe a handful of times a year. Yeah. Like when we have guests in town or we're going to a special concert or something. Otherwise, we, we play during the day. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of fun to be down there at night. Although, let me tell you, it hasn't changed. Uh, ever since we've been coming to you from Las Vegas, I've been complaining about the flip-flop nation that has taken over Las <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> I have never seen more flip flops, gym shorts, and bathing suits in my life, and this is after dark. Yeah, in a in a pretty upscale casino, I saw a kid. I don't know if he was a kid. He was probably thirty, sitting at a blackjack table in a fucking bathing suit. Yeah, at night. Why is that allowed? Why is that even fucking allowed? There should be some kind of dress code. But worse than that. Was the chick sitting next to you at dinner? Yeah, we're Dale and I spent three hundred bucks on dinner last night or on Sunday night, and the girl sitting next to us took her shoes off and sat Indian style on her banquette next to Dale. Yep, with her fucking shoes off. Yeah, in a fancy restaurant. Yeah, and she got away with it. I I I. Where's the class? There's no class left. They obviously had money. They were spending money in a fancy restaurant, and they were buying all the same kind of foods and drinks that we were. I felt I felt like that situation she next was, to me yeah. was like a sugar daddy thing. Was it? Because yeah. he was dressed nicely, and he she was, was wearing just, a bra. She was wearing like a bra yeah, as her top. And she would say things like try to interact, and she was, you know, just because I think she was a little drunk. He, he was just having none of it. Yeah. He was just over it. I mean, I, I think he's like, yes, I'll I'll take you back to the hotel and fuck you, but you know, you're kind of embarrassing me right now. <laughs> well, yeah, because she had her <laughs> shoes off and her feet up on the chair. Yeah, it was it was gross. Yeah. Anyway, we'll put that aside. Speaking of the Cosmopolitan, very excited about this news. It came out this past weekend. Everybody was is applauding them for it. Um, Cosmo currently is owned by Blackstone, which is a real estate investment company. They gave every single one of their 5,400 employees $5,000 surprise bonus. That's a pretty damn good bonus. cost them $27 million to do this. And talk about goodwill. And talk about why. Why would they do this since they're selling the company like tomorrow? Is it was it like their goodbye present to all their employees? Maybe. Maybe. Because I assume all the employees are staying. Dale was told by one of the employees at the Cosmo on Sunday night that they were just told on Sunday that MGM sale has now been finalized and it's going to happen soon. Yeah. They so, didn't, she couldn't tell me when, yeah. but that it was soon. And then she also told me, because I told her that I was excited because I'm an MGM fan yeah. over the other properties right. here, like Caesars, I could care less about. Yeah. And she's like, oh, that's good to hear because the reception really hasn't been that well. But you also have to take that with knowing that Cosmo currently is independent. It's independent, and that's it's what a, a lot of people very, like about it. It's a very small player on the strip, and I think a lot of people like that. So yeah. now they're going into this big conglomerate and i yeah. think a lot of people are scared uneasy even players that they might like, ruin wanna, it they might ruin it they might right ruin exactly it. well we hope they don't change anything i wouldn't change anything except the signage i mean i just waiting for mgm to take over so we could get one of the rooms overlooking <laughs> the bellagio fountain it's the only uh um, <laughs> the only reason why you guys really might not excited. know this but it's the only casino uh on the strip that has balconies uh, yeah so you can literally get a balcony room and and look out and like sit outside and watch the Bellagio Fountains. Fountain. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Anyway. We are not doing commercial for Cosmo, even though I own Blackstone stock. So 
we're just we're all happy about the situation. What's well, a great property? It's very hip. It's kind of young. I mean, that's the worst part. I don't like going there at night because it's just not my cup of tea. Because right. I mean, the whole thing just changes. It's a very different world. Yeah. So across town, we've talked about this before on the show. Area fifteen, which is the multi functional building that has meow wolf and axe throwing and cool bars and all kinds of fun fun stuff they have a brand new thing called liftoff and man you know i don't i don't always go for the hokey stuff like the big ferris wheel that we have here and and the the rides on top of the stratosphere and all that stuff but this is freaking cool this is a tower it's 150 feet tall and you get on this it's basically a floating bar. Yeah. And it has a balloon over it. The balloon's kind of fake, I think. but It serves it, no purpose. Right. So all the people sit around this round bar, and they buckle you in, I'm sure. And then it goes off the ground 150 feet in the air, and you can see all of Las Vegas. And it's all lit up, and it has like lasers and lights and all kinds of stuff. It's really cool. I want to do this. So basically what you do is you buy a ticket, you go to a bar. They send you to a bar. You get a drink. Yeah. And then when it's your turn, you go out and you get strapped in and you can bring your drink with you. Yeah. And up you go and you're up there for 10 minutes. It's just a 10 minute thing. I love it. I think it's fun. I it, love it. I want to do it. You can be a kid, but you have to be 48 inches tall. That's how tall you have to be to ride the ride. <laughs> <laughs> you remember in theme parks where they yes. have the little thing at the front of you must be this tall to ride. In related news, I mean, if you guys don't know what Meow Wolf is, and you haven't been listening to the Swish edition, we've been talking about it since forever. Started in Santa Fe. It's uh, George, what's his last name? R. R. Martin. R. R. Martin, the guy behind Game of Thrones. He started it in Santa Fe, New Mexico. They now have one here in Las Vegas. There's one in Denver, Colorado. And they just announced this past weekend that they're uh, expanding to Dallas and Houston. So they're taking over Texas. Nice. It's really fun. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, it, it's almost impossible to you describe. Can't you can't explain it. You just have to go and experience it for yourself. Yeah. And man, it's fun. Everyone that we've ever taken has so we, had a really good time. So we've been the two. We've been the one in Santa Fe and we've been to one here. Yeah. I actually think the one in Santa Fe is better than here. I think so. And I think they change, though. I think yeah, they're over completely time. completely different things. Completely different things. Yeah. And if you guys don't know what it, it's basically an interactive art installation where hundreds of different artists come together to produce one kind of story. And each each of their places has a an overarching story. Yeah. And I don't really want to say anymore because it kind of ruins it. Yeah. It, it but there are secret doors and there's all kinds of fun, crazy things going on. Very unexpected things. Right. Yeah. yeah. And there's and always if, something hidden. And if you really want to play and if you really want to spend hours and hours and hours, there's a continuing story and clues and you can find, right. you have to read lots of things. There's an and, answer to something. And we've never, things. Dale and I have never had the gumption to read all the stuff and figure it it's all out. Much. It's a puzzle and we just it's kind too of, much. It's look weird. For, we look for the private secret doors and that's about all we I do. I just want to look and see what I can find. Yeah. But it's super fun. And, yeah. and the one here in Vegas is basically a psychedelic supermarket. It's a grocery store. It's crazy. And once you find your way to the back of the grocery store, then it becomes something really completely different. Freaking weird. Yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Speaking of supermarkets, you guys should get over to your local supermarket real quick because if you guys like Old Bay seasoning, which we like in this house, you want to try to find the Old Bay Goldfish. Because I tell you what. They're coming to a grocery store near you. This is the one new thing that I actually want to actually eat. I want to actually freaking want to eat of it. Of all the things we've talked about on the right. show before? Yeah. Right. Old Bay Goldfish sold out almost immediately when they put it up on their website last week because you could buy it directly from them. Sold out in hours. But the parent company, McCormick, says that they are currently in the process of working with Pepperidge Farm, and they're bringing the spiced crackers to grocery stores across the country. But it is a limited time. Boo, offer. boo! Because this is a great, uh, this is a great freaking idea. That's this a is great a great idea. idea. 
Last year, Goldfish did a thing with Disney. They had the Mickey Mouse Goldfish. That was real short-lived. And they also did one with Disney, surprise, with the Mandalorian. Uh, they all sold out really fast. I know. I got, do you remember? I but bought this, I this, bought the Mickey Mouse one. Yeah, but this but this is a little different. This is something that could actually be a staple in the this goldfish is something that line. Could, this is something that they could it, have all the time. Just, just do it. People would freaking buy it. Well, okay, here's the thing. Yeah. So I don't know if Old Bay reaches across the entire country. It's it's very mid Atlantic. It's, it's certainly mid Atlantic. East Coast. It's certainly mid Atlantic. Yeah. It um, would do really well in Maryland and Delaware. Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, yeah. New Jersey. Right. Um, those places, it would be rock yeah, solid. Do West Coast people even know what Old Bay is? I don't, I don't know. I, don't I know. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, literally, you can put Old Bay on anything, but it's great on shrimp. It's great Crab. on... Crab. Uh, jambalaya. It's, it's great on so many things. Potatoes. Mashed potatoes, yeah. Wonderful. Anyway, Goldfish, Old Bay, coming to your store near you. For a limited time. You know, some of the ones that they make, I don't love. I don't like, I, I, I like pretzels, but I don't like pretzel goldfish. And I, I like the pizza ones. Those are okay. And But I don't like the flavor blasted cheddar. I want just the just regular, regular classic. Just the regular one. The regular classic ones. I still think that my ultimate all-time like pretzel snack, and you know this, is is the original combos. Oh, you combo. don't see those very. I mean, they sell but them. They in the have stores. kind of a fake. That middle, that bone marrow part in the middle is just kind well, of a fake taste. Well, if you think of it as bone marrow, of course you're not going to like it. I don't like bone marrow. <laughs> delicious crackers. Speak, pretzels. Speaking of delicious, excited about this, and maybe, maybe some of the things we're about to talk about might get us to watch broadcast TV again. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious about this, Dale. It was just announced yesterday that Reba McIntyre is going to join ABC's Big Sky as a regular for season three. She'll play a mysterious business owner in town. Mm. All of her employees are dying or something. Oh, I love this. I, you know, you and you I didn't like Big Sky. I, I, yeah, I liked it, and then I didn't like it, and then I got back into it, and then we stopped watching it, and I, I really think I want to catch up on it. But anyway, you know how much I love Reba. Reba is the shit. I love her old sitcom, Reba. We watch it all the time on the weekend because the news sucks. The news programs suck on Saturday, so I yeah. usually put Reba on instead. And I can watch those episodes over and over and over. They're just fucking hilarious. I think she's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, I'm excited that she's coming back to a, a, a series. And this is, I think, the first time that she's done anything where she's not like... Nice. It's not her show. <laughs> Funny. Right. She's going to be a mean old woman. She's playing a villain. Yeah. I think that's kind of fun. I think so, too. And speaking of Reba, and this is a crossover, it was finally announced that CBS is picking up a True Lies series. You guys remember True Lies. It's the James Cameron movie from the early 90s with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. I could watch. I've probably seen it. 40 times it's a great movie i could great literally movie. we could literally turn off these mics and go watch it again and i'll enjoy every great moment movie. of it anyway it's finally coming to a series james cameron's involved it's going to be directed by mcg who made the charlie's angels movies and matt nix is involved he got if you guys don't know him he did burn notice remember burn notice yeah Fucking it still comes on on repeats constant love it Anyway, so the three of them are making this new True Lies show. But here's the Reba McIntyre connection. The lead, the guy that is playing Harry, the Arnold Schwarzenegger character, yeah. is Steve Howey. Who, is, this, is he playing Harry? Yeah. This is not. This is like a reboot, not like it's a, a whole... It's a remake, not remake. a reboot. Okay. Right. So he was in Reba. He was also in Shameless for the entire run of Shameless. I assume he slimmed down because he got kind of... Fat and in Shameless, he was a little chunky. And if he was, he's playing like a super agent, secret agent. I think he can't be like super chunky, but I don't know. Anyway, love him. People. He's funny as shit. I'm, I'm not fat shaming. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I think he. I I love him to death. I first knew about him from Reba, and then I started watching him. It's like, wait a minute, he's funny. I recognize this guy, and 
I love his. I love the characters. Yeah, that he plays. I would They're say that he was probably the, great. He was probably the funniest thing about Reba, and he was amazing in Shameless. Oh yes, he was. Yeah. No, Barbara Jean was the funniest in Reba. Okay, well, but he still had his. Yes, he still I had know. lots of great I lines. Know. Yeah. Anyway, he's the lead, and then his wife is being played by Ginger Gonzaga. I don't know her, but apparently she's also going to be appearing in uh, Disney's upcoming She-Hulk series. Well, there you go. Yeah, so excited about that. So True Lies coming to CBS next fall. And then there's HBO. Now, we we usually only talk about streamers, but uh, we also have an HBO membership, right? We have it. <laughs> so there are there are still good good things on HBO regular, not HBO Max. Yeah. And last night, I actually I think it was Sunday night. I watched the first episode of the tri- Time Traveler's Wife. Dale, I know you didn't watch this with me because I think I watched it after you went to bed. It is fun. And guess who's in it? Rose Leslie from Game of Thrones. She's the redhead from Game of Thrones who's All married to say, Kit Carson. All you gotta say is Theo James. Theo James. He was in the Divergent movies. You know him. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, he's in this. So they're the two leads. This is a science fiction romantic drama. It was based on this amazing 2003 novel. I love this woman's name. Her name is Audrey Neffenegger. <laughs> what a horrible <laughs> name is that? Neffenegger. 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 Anyway, apparently uh, it's a great book. It was made in a, a 2009 movie with Rachel McAdams and Eric Bana. Um, but now they're doing it again. And man... I loved the first episode. I was totally All digging right. it. And I was like, I almost paused it and like ran down the hall to get you. Don't and get say, me. Please get out of bed and come <laughs> watch the show. It's so fucking good. <laughs> it's really fun. And you like, he never knows. So he time travels, right? But he never knows when it's going to happen. It's kind of like quantum leap, right? It's kind of, kind of a copy of quantum. Oh Wave. God. He I just like now, now I don't know if I'm interested. Oh, but, but, but like Terminator, he ends up wherever he time travels to. He ends up naked because he can't bring his clothes with him. So he's just ha- he's naked. Every Is that Theo James's character. Yes. Okay. Now it's worth. I have never seen more Theo James butthole <laughs> in my life. He ends up every time he jumps. He's completely naked. He has to find someone. He like steals. He like he'll punch someone and steal their clothes. Steal their clothes. Yeah, because he's yeah. naked. <laughs> it's a fun show. Episode one premiered this past Sunday. If you guys want to uh, get caught up, I'm sure HBO is showing it a million times this week. Episode two will show up next Sunday night. Anyway, kind of fun. <laughs> I'm excited about it. I I have a little rant. You know, we have to do a little rants every now and then. All right. And if you're guilty of this, and I'm talking to you, not Dale, I'm talking to the people listening to the show. If you're guilty of this, I apologize in advance. I don't want to hurt your feelings. And I'm not singling you out, but I think you need to stop doing this. Um, I believe that people do not need to post on social media, especially Facebook, on their birthday. Thank you for all the birthday wishes today. (laughs) I think it's like the tackiest thing you can do, especially late in the afternoon or early evening, because I think it's a not so veiled way for you to say to the people who didn't say happy birthday to you. It's passive aggressive. Why didn't you say happy birthday to me? <laughs> I honestly believe that, Dale. So I'm not a Facebook poster, but you're every, not. But every year on my birthday, I get these messages. We all do. And all I do is I just go through it like, 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 yeah. like, 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 like to, to, to know that. I have, have acknowledged. I have acknowledged that the I've time seen time that this. you have taken. Thank you to post for, publicly exactly. on Facebook. That's very nice of you. I do the same That's thing. That's what I do. But a lot of friends that I and I try to be very conscious of this, and I try to say happy birthday to friends, especially people that I'm close to. I don't say happy birthday to everyone like that one well, person. We call those people. Yeah, but I'm talking about like the other people that I don't that I wouldn't call. I still say happy birthday to them on Facebook. Yeah. But um, they don't need to say thank you. And a lot of them do individually Mm. under each one. Oh, thank you. I don't don't think that's necessary either. But I think this, yeah, I think this passive aggressive thanks for all the birthday wishes at 4 p.m. 
Yeah, you're just you're just reminding all your other friends that didn't say happy birthday Don't to you forget. that it's your fucking birthday. I got I got ten more hours of my birthday. So again, if you're guilty of this, I apologize. I'm not talking about you. I'm mm. not talking about you, Melissa or <laughs> Marcy or Jeff. Whoever does it, just don't do it. I think it's tacky. You don't need to say thank you for happy birthday messages. You, uh, In the same way, and I actually said this to a friend of mine just last week who like reached out to me in a text and said, thank you for the birthday card you sent me. Like, hey, you, know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to thank people for a That's birthday card. Different. You think you have to thank someone for a birthday card? We know in the mail this day, these days. You, you, You're just acknowledging that, yes, the U, like, well, USPS that actually got it here. No, I even sent the card. <laughs> I just, I guess I hate this thanking people for shit. Although I have this. I have a box of thank you notes right here on my desk. Uh, because if someone does send me a gift, I, I do like to send an actual thank you in the mail yeah. to them. Yeah. I try to be good about that. <laughs> but I don't think you have to say thank you for a birthday wish. All I don't right. I don't think it's necessary. All right. All right. I'm going to jump uh, past this next thing. And uh, I don't know. Let's do something bingy. <laughs> It's one of your uh, binge Yeah, I, I never thought about those when we were trying to do this. <laughs> that works perfectly. It does work perfectly. But at the end of the show, we like to talk about some of the streaming stuff that's out there. Since we're not doing Binge Bum anymore, uh, there's some big Hulu news. Only Murders in the Building. Dale and I are very excited about this. We liked season one. Season two is coming out on June 28th, Dale. Is it on your calendar? Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah. Is Only Murders in the Building is going in my same bucket as the second season of Flight Attendant. So you think that Only Murders in the Building should have been <sighs> one season? No, no. I'm not saying that. But these are, are are very different types of series, and yeah. I I don't want to be bored with too much of the same thing. Right. And Flight Attendant was great first season, and I feel like that these these not flashbacks, but these uh, insider head insider head yeah. moments are becoming way much. more frequent, and I'm getting bored, and I'm becoming it. to like not caring what happens all right well you were so now i know that only murders is different (laughs) but it's a very specific type of series and i don't want i want you to reserve your judgment on this one until it actually comes out because i enjoyed only murders in ability but it wasn't a great series maybe you will enjoy the two people that they've added to the show shirley mclean is joining the cast for season two she'll play behind that she'll play the mother of a recently murdered uh, arconia apartment resident and then amy schumer is going to be there playing an exaggerated version of herself see that worries me that worries me i you know i love to hate i love to hate amy schumer i'm not a huge fan i love her and i hate her i hate her stand up i love her as an actress so we'll see what happens all right we'll see also coming up this might be this is really cool this i think is freaking perfect this is really cool fit we've run out of music so i'm gonna have to press the button one more time (laughs) um all right, so you ready for this? We don't know where it's going, but everybody wants it. Hulu wants it. HBO wants it. Paramount wants it. Married with Children, the 1990s sitcom that is just so ridiculously over the top and yes. crazy. It's coming back as an animated series. Cannot wait. Fox is going to get this. Fox is going to get this. The creators of Family Guy and American, All American Dad, uh, yeah. they are shopping this around. But here's the thing they've got Ed O'Neill, Katie Seagal, Christina Applegate, and David <laughs> Faustino on board. It's to, fucking amazing. To voice the four characters of I the hate family. cartoons. I'm not a huge fan of these adult cartoons, yeah. but this I can get behind. I think this is the perfect thing that could be made for an animated it's series. the cartoon version of perfect. Married with perfect. Children. But why can't, why can't fucking HBO or one of these things and make it a true adult 
animated series. Well, it's the stream- let's get Ed it's O'Neil the streamers that are interested swearing in. and cussing and doing some weird shit. Let's, let's hope get it going. Let's Not hope Fox. Let's anymore. hope one. And you said Fox, but let's hope one of the streamers gets it instead of one of the yes. broadcast networks. Yes, I think it'll be more fun. This could be one of the best adult. It could be super animated fun. series, and the fact that the four original the four characters, are back, right? Love that. Love All it. right, we'll Freaking keep on top of this, and we'll let you know when we find out more. I've Y'all, never been more excited for a cartoon in my life. He's excited. All right, guys, have a good week. We'll see you on May twenty fourth. Bye, bitches. $195 million, it's all going to charity. Oh, that's horrible.